too often uh, the study of Armenian architecture has been confined to the study of plans and forms and elevations. That's very important, but they are essentially documents of a past, original documents of a past that is sometimes not known very well. And I mean that very literally. The churches are inscribed very often. They bear sculpture very often. And sometimes they're painted. And all of these elements of the structure convey messages about the patron and what he or she wished, the identity of the patron, the, the religious background of the patron, and um, potentially their status. So we can use careful study of the inscriptions, sculpture, and paintings to build a history of not just Armenia, but the entire Western Asia Minor. Uh, and this, has, this kind of study is in its infancy. One example of the way in which a church can reveal something of its political and social climate is a church called Muren. It's a seventh century church located in what is now Eastern Turkey, what we call Western Armenia. And this church bears an inscription which names the Byzantine Emperor Heraclius, and then names a prince of Armenia, and then a local lord, and then a local bishop. The church also bears sculpture on its west facade and north facade. On the north facade, we think, is an image of the Byzantine Emperor Heraclius returning the true cross to Jerusalem, which was a very important 7th century event. Scholars have studied this inscription for what it may reveal about relationships between the Byzantine Empire and local Armenian princes. This was a time when the Byzantine Empire was trying to consolidate support from the Armenians against the Persians. So here is a very good example of the way in which a church, which might not seem particularly historically revealing, actually offers original insight into the immediate reality of the time when it was built. I think Armenian churches convey the depth of faith of the patrons who built them and those who used them. I think at the same time they tell us so much about the political, social, and economic worlds in which these patrons were living. Many Armenian churches are in emergency condition, and we can see this, for example, in the region of Ani. Churches have been neglected or poorly restored, and they are in dire need of stabilization. This is particularly problematic since the area is a seismic area. So anytime there's an earthquake, these monuments could come down. The churches of Armenia are important not just as moments in a medieval past, but they are traces of people and their lost homeland. So they are symbols of a lost past and are incredibly potent as such. So they are important both to historians and to a modern culture, and it is of the utmost importance to protect them before they collapse. Once they collapse, they are essentially invalid. You can't just put the stones up again. Archaeologically, historically, they'll never be what they were.